in biomimicry, biomimetics, we are trying to develop devices that can, or solutions, or a tissue that can mimic actually the natural tissue or the natural natural system that we would like to replace. Biomimetics is actually biology, mechanical, and electrical system. So, so that's what we what we mean by biomimetics. So if you have a system that is um, consisting with or consisting of a biological component a mechanical component and the electrical component we call biomimetics and we are using biomimetics into neural interfacing what we mean by neural interfacing is that i would like to get a device or a, a sensor that is interfacing with ne neurons and communicating the signal from the neuron the, the electrical signal from the neurons so by definition biomimicry is the design of structures and mechanics closely resembling living tissue and systems. We have something called conducting polymers. Remember, if, so the neuron, if you look at the neuron, the neuron is, is um, capable of conducting electrical signal, but it is like a polymer. It's, it's like plastic, it's flexible. It is not, it's not solid, it's not metal. If that is what we would like to create artificial neuron, we would like it to resemble the natural neuron. So we'd like to design or develop something called conducting polymers. And those electronic, they have electronic conduction, ion transport. So it's not, it's not electric, uh, electrons, so it's ion. It's all about ions. And it has cellular adhesion and also growth. So if, if I really want to create an artificial neuron, so that's something we, we think a lot about in research. So we tr we generated something called polyelectrolyte gel. It has mechanical and chemical properties similar to living tissue. Uh, it's biomimetic ion exchange. So it allows for ions to move in and out, which means that it's electrical um, you know, activity and transport phenomena similar to for the ions to go in and out. And it, it, it's also designed as a standalone electrode. So it does not need to be connected to a battery to do amplification of the current or the voltage. So all of these actually we, what we call a uh, bioelectrodes. So that's, that, those are the basics or the dreams and desires that we would like to have if you would like to create something called an artificial neuron. Why this is important for us and why we, what are the challenges of creating something that lead, led us to create something like this. If you would like to measure, you know, the electrical activity of the brain, the motor cortex, you need to have a microchip implanted in the body. And what we mean by that is that I would like to have some wires implanted into, into the cortex that the, these wires, fine wires, very fine wires, to touch the neurons of the motor cortex. The problem is all was and still is, when we do the, when we have metallic microelectrodes into the brain, that the interface remain the weakest link uh, in the neuroprosthetic devices. So see all these devices, all these solutions and um, functional electrical stimulation uh, systems, they are all working good. But the problem with all of them is always how we are going to get these fine wires, electric wires, to touch the neurons. Uh, so that interface is still a big challenge, and if a, a small movement is going to affect our readings. So that is one of the biggest challenges why we would like to create polymer-like electrode rather than a metal electrode that we're only using. Current bioelectrodes have poor anchoring at the nerve interface. That's a big challenge. We would like to develop an electrode that can have attachment and adhesion to the nerve without damaging the, down damaging it. And if you recall, I've told you probably in the previous lecture that if anything touches a neuron, it immediately goes to controlled apoptosis or damage. And that is a big problem for us. So we would like to generate an electrode that has some adhesive properties without damaging the neurons. So that's one thing. The other thing is the mechanical mismatch between metal electrodes and soft tissue. This mismatch has a lot of problems. That's why we would like to look at polymers so that we have similarities. Let me tell you one thing in, in bone. If you have, let's say, a total hip or joint, let's say a total hip replacement. So you have the stem and into the bone. So let's say here we have bone. Uh, you can see that you have a metallic part, the stem, and then you have the bone around it, and they have different mechanical properties. Because of the metal being strong, we have something called 
um, stress shielding, which means that the uh, bone around the uh, metal will not be sensing loads as usual because the metal is holding the largest amount of load. And that's why, and then the because our body is efficient, if you are not using the calcium there, uh, it will be dissolved to be used somewhere else. And because of that, because of stress shielding, we are seeing a lot of failure in implants because the bone around the implants is dissolving. And that is one of the results of mismatch between uh, a metallic implant and a soft tissue around it. For example, even, even a hard tissue like bone, they have, you know, they're still close in the strength, but they have mismatch and that leads a lot of problem. Let you go, let go now, how would that affect soft tissue and that is in touch with metallic components? Uh, also, inefficient, inefficient charge transfer and signal attenu attenuation because of the metal uh, resistance. I remember, if you have ions inside the body, propagation of electrical signal inside the body is very fast because it is ion uh, and we have less resistance and we have these ch channels. Uh, but if you have a metallic wire, you have resistance and that can, could lead to signal attenuation. And then you have inflammatory response because of the fibroblast and uh, stimulation site. Mm -hmm. Even if you have a, met a metal that is compatible, because of stimulation, we are noticing that the stimulation site have a lot of fibroblasts in that, in that location. All of these challenges led us to the thinking about what can we do in order to develop better electrodes. That's the whole story, why we're doing this. If we have better electrodes, it means that we are going to develop better functional electric stimulation systems. That's way we're going to be helping a lot of people with a spinal cord injury or neurological conditions or disorders. Now, the current solutions, uh, we have something called surface modification of electrodes. So we have electrodes and you put coating on them so that they're compatible. Uh, and we have also conducting polymers, allowing ions to move in and out. We have something called bioadhesive molecules. So you can have a polymer that is that can connect, attach to a nerve. If we were successful in creating materials that can adhere to a nerve, I think we can we are we can say that we can create an artificial neuron. Uh, and that is what we're working on right now. So the, re the result of doing such interventions like these, we have decreased resistance, which means that we can uh, conduct electricity faster, decrease in inflammation response, so we don't have uh, biocompatibility issues, and you don't have encapsulation or foreign body reaction, uh, incremental improvement, but fundamental pro we have incremental improvement, but still fundamental pro problems persist. Now, a novel solution, we have a paradigm shift. We are trying to do a biomimetics approach through field responsive polymers. And that is where everybody now is spending a lot of money and time and effort in biomedical engineering to create polymers that they mimic the function of a neuron. So I hope that this is this slide it has a lot of information, but I wanted to explain them carefully for, you know, and slowly for all of us in order to understand what is it that people are doing in biomedical engineering that might be uh, novel and life changing, you know, changing for pe people with spinal cord injuries.